Very good evening to all my viewers. I am Dr. Sonali Jagati, OBG resident at SCV Medical College Hospital, Kattak, having secured an All India rank of 3,546 in NEET PG 2021. In today's uh, video, I should be discussing a very important yet often confusing topic for all the undergraduates as well as the postgraduates. That is, the topic is primary amenorrhea. First, let's define it. It is according to the latest edition of NOVAC. Earlier, the age cutoff was different. Now, it is in uh, failure of attaining menarche or attainment of menses by the age of 13 years in absence of secondary sexual characteristics or failure of attaining menses by the age of 15 years in presence of secondary sexual characteristic. Remember that the earlier older definition was 14 and 16 uh, years and some uh, textbooks still uh, have uh, followed that only but this is according to NOVAC latest edition. Also a point to be noted is that uh, additionally they have told if 5 years after the initial breast development if the breast development has occurred before the age of 10 years then that is also considered as primary amenorrhea. Remember that this can be confused with another uh, topic which we shall be discussing later uh, that is in the adolescent PCOS as per the new definition of irregular menses they have also mentioned that primary amenorrhea by the age of 15 years to more than 3 years post hilarchy. So keep that separately and only remember the definition of primary amenorrhea as 13 years in absence of secondary sexual characteristics and 15 years in the presence of secondary sexual characteristics. And if breast development before the age of 10 years, then 5 years later to it, if there is no menses, that also is considered as primary amenorrhea. Before going into the causes, we should understand the uh, physiology of the uh, menstruation, how it is occurring. Now, uh, for a normal menses to occur, it has to, fro uh, from the CNS till the outflow tract, everything has to be normal. As we know, the hypothalamus produces GnRH which, which acts on pituitary which will produce FSH and LH which will act on the ovaries. Okay. So the hypothalamus produces GnRH which acts on the pituitary which produces FSH and LH. It will act on the ovaries. Ovaries produce estrogen and progesterone. Which, which will act on the uterus and normal endometrium and if there is a normal outflow tract the uh, girl will have her menses. So this is the normal physiology uh, for uh, normal anatomy and physiology which is required for the menses to occur. Now this has been divided into compartments for understanding the reason for amenorrhea the uh, compartments have been classified as Compartment 1. So we go from down to up. Uterus and any uh, outflow tract abnormality is compartment 1. Ovaries constitute the compartment 2. Pituitary is compartment 3. And hypothalamus problem is compartment 4. Now this is very important to remember so that you can understand the causes of uh, amenorrhea easily. Now coming to the causes, so first is hypogonadotropic hypogonadism. Okay, so these we are dealing with the hypothalamus or the CNS problem. So hypogonadotropic hypogonadism or hypergonadotropic hypogonadism. Now what can be the causes of hypogonadotropic hypogonadism? Uh, the first can be delayed puberty. Next, it can be because of any um, CNS tumors like prolactinoma, craniopharyngioma, Kalman syndrome which is uh, present in the hypothalamus uh, then there can be any hormone secreting pituitary tumor also causes of hypergonadotropic hypogonadism include all your ovarian causes so basically the higher function is normal but since the ovary is not functioning the FSH and LH have increased but there is the ovary is not receptive or the gonads are not receptive to it so hypergonadotropic hypogonadism means all your gonadal causes so it includes your primary ovarian failure it can be because of idiopathic cause chemotherapy 
radiation induced mumps oophoritis resistant ovarian syndrome gonadal dysgenesis or gonadal agenesis then aromatase deficiency 17 hydroxylase deficiency next there can be abnormal chromosomal pattern okay it can uh, also be seen in the uh, gonadal uh, dysgenesis so these include your turner syndrome which is 45 xo or turner mosaic pure gonadal dysgenesis like your swire syndrome which is 46 xy turner is 45 xo then androgen insensitivity syndrome which is 46 xy partial deletion of x chromosome next is your thyroid or any adrenal dysfunction also affect the menstrual cycle okay so uh, then any uh, outflow tract abnormality this is uh, very important is your imperforate hymen or transverse vaginal septum metabolic disorder can be early pcos or any obesity let's come to evaluation this is the most important yet tricky part of the primary amenorrhea so when a patient presents to us with uh, primary amenorrhea suppose a girl say a 14 year old girl comes to the opd with her mom complaining of primary amenorrhea what are we supposed to do first of all do a urine pregnancy test because we want to rule out pregnancy it has to be done for documentation and it's very important then next after you have ruled out pregnancy you will look for the secondary sexual characteristic these include the breast uh, development you have to see for axillary hair and pubic hair then you have to see whether it is present or no suppose the secondary sexual characters are present now i want to see whether the uterus is present or no how do i see this well i am not going to do her pv examination i'll prefer to do a per rectal examination or ultrasound if only i'll definitely order ultrasound also so with per rectal uh, ultrasound uh, imaging using imaging modality i will look for the presence or absence of uterus if uterus is absent okay then i'll do a karyotyping the karyotype can be 46 xx or 46 xy if it is 46 xx it is mullerian agenesis or meyer rokitansky koster hausser syndrome mrk syndrome if it is 46 xy then it is androgen insensitivity syndrome remember androgen insensitivity syndrome patient is genotypically male that is 46 xy but phenotypically female then next if uterus is present then everything is fine that means uh, estrogen is there uterus is present that means there might be some outflow tract obstruction do a local examination and see for any uh, imperforate hymen or any transverse vaginal septum if anatomically also the outflow tract is normal then it may be a constitutionally delayed uh, pubert i mean delayed uh, uh, menarche or it can be due to some cns problem like prolactinoma now coming to if the secondary sexual characteristics are absent then you have to look for the height of the patient if she is short then you have to do her fsh very very important if her fsh is high high means it's going to be more than 20 international units per meter then it is a case of hypergonadotropic hypogonadism as already mentioned this turns towards the uh, something uh, problem in the gonads and the most common cause of primary amenorrhea remember is the turner syndrome so you are going to suspect her turner syndrome so her height is short her fsh is high and there is absence secondary sexual characteristic suppose the fsh came out to be low that means the problem lies somewhere in the hypothalamus or in the pituitary low means le less than 5 international units per liter so there you will go for the causes of hypogonadotropic hypogonadism then if her height is normal then you will do the fsh if again it is high then it may be again some ovarian causes or gonadal uh, causes apart from turner syndrome it can be something like xx or xy gonadal dysgenesis although less common but it can be seen if her fsh is low then it can be isolated gnrh deficiency or it can be a physiological delay or it can be like kalman syndrome now there are some important history that you must ask the patient of uh, amenorrhea so first is history of attainment of thylarchy or 
when was the age when she got her growth spurt this is important because thylarche uh, presence of thylarche means the estrogen action is present next you should ask her the his family history of any delayed or early menarche from this we can know any constitutional delay of uh, menses is there then any health problems during childhood like for example cah which is diagnosed in the early uh, part of neonatal uh, life so for this you should take the history any virilization features is there or no like hoarseness of voice or any uh, male pattern hair growth these are also important to be taken for uh, ruling out cah any adrenal tumor or any cushing syndrome ask for any uh, stressful uh, activity that she is having recently any sudden weight change any eating habit so that she is having which is abnormal any high intensity exercise that she is doing because these all can cause something known as functional hypothalamic amenorrhea this is often seen in uh, athletes who undergo high intensity training so this has to be asked properly any drug history that ask for any history of galactoria now galactoria because we want to rule out prolactinoma so this is important also you can ask for uh, features of headache any visual field defects any yeah, fatigue polydipsia polyuria this this again a pointer towards cns tumors or empty cella syndrome also very very important you should ask uh, if if she is giving history of cyclical abdominal pain or urinary retention or urinary complaint then this may be a major pointer towards outflow tract abnormality like imperforate hymen also you should a uh, very important take the history of any tb contact any history of exposure to radiation or any uh, uh, exposure to any chemotherapy drugs so i think uh, with this i have just concise the definition the causes the uh, evaluation and what is the important history and why we take this history for the for a case of primary amenorrhea uh, i hope this concept is very very clear because unless the concept is clear you uh, everyone finds it very difficult to analyze a patient and if any other doubt you have please write in the comment section and i'll be glad to answer that thank you and have a great day ahead